All right, guys, this is Jacob from Wager Me This, and uh, I got a $30 bankroll here, or $300 bankroll here, and I, I want to I wanna talk about something that I put on my website, and I've reiterated it numerous times on this channel about playing the 6 and 8 and being, 6 and 8 should be an integral part of your strategies. It should be in everything you do. And, and the reason, there's a couple reasons why, okay? Number one, you get 10 ways to win versus six, six ways to lose when you play the six and eight, all right? That's one huge part of it. So that means that a good majority of the time you'll win twice before losing, a good majority of the time, all right? And another thing about the six and eight is, is that the six and eight, it, it's targeted in a lot of dice sets. So whether you believe or you don't believe in dice control, the six and eight is a, is a targeted group of numbers in them dice sets, like the 3B and all them, they target hitting them numbers. So if someone that is good at or even can just moderately do it, it's better to be on them numbers to take advantage of that. But mostly, I just think that the reason people don't make a ton of money on the six and eight is because they're doing just one little thing wrong with it, all right? So, Let's say you play six and eight for 30 a piece, all right? So this is where they make the mistake. They try to play the, the six and eight for 12 a piece first and go up. The six and eight is is a, a bet you should go. You should play bigger, reduce once, and then it's free. And I'll show you why, okay? So a $30 six and eight, all right? Let's say our point is five, all right? So we are, <coughs> we're already on, placed our bets, we're looking for a six or eight before a seven. And we got the eight, uh, six right off the bat. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's gonna pay $35. All right, so $35 right there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tell the dealer, say, hey dealer, drop our six and eight bets down to $18 a piece. All right, so in one hit, you've successfully got a six and eight for $18 a piece for $1 of bankroll value, all right? So you won 35 and you're playing 36. So you're playing two $18 bets for a single dollar when you're, when you're out of your original bankroll. And that's another thing is that's the way that you should look at the way you're playing. It shouldn't be, okay, I just made 35 more dollars. You should just look at it from your original bankroll, from your original where you're at and how you're doing it, all right? Because that way you have, an, you have a, an idea of, okay, it's okay to be just playing this for a dollar. You're not playing it for $36 at this point. And that, that's the better way to look at it is that you're only playing it for a dollar. See, if you leave right now, you lose this and you leave, you only lost one dollar, all right? And, and so that's the idea behind this, all right? And so in my opinion, you should always be regressing that one time and then playing both bets for free, basically. And you can you can play it bigger and play it for free, for sure, all right? So there's a five, three, eight. So we hit a six and an eight before we hit a seven so far. All right, so that's gonna pay $21. And from here, you can press, regress, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, that's up to you. It's only that first one that really matters, all right? There's a six. And I'm not and I'm not shooting the dice with any kind of control or trying. I'm just rolling them. And that's the other thing is on a random roller, the six and eight is highly valuable. It'll hit a lot of the time. A whole bunch of the time. All right, so on this six and eight play, at this point, you're only in this six and eight for a dollar. That point was just made, all right? So do you do you go back up or whatever? No, you just say, okay, I'm in that for a single dollar, all right? You just play it out, play whatever, you know, press, regress, do all those things. At this point, it doesn't make a difference. It's like, it's however you want to play it, all right? So there's another eight before a seven. So let's see how, I'm just gonna leave these over here because I'm just seeing how many times we win per seven rolls. Oh, and there's the seven. Okay. So, next, next shoot. 
Okay. This time, the first time, I guess I, I should probably start this over because I, uh, I didn't actually roll a point that first time. So what I'll do is I'll take down one of these. Right, well, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reset because it wasn't totally organic because I didn't start from nothing. I actually say we already had a point. But use that way you guys got the idea of what I'm trying to do here. Alright, so we're gonna start this running through this 300 bucks from right here. Okay. There's our 300 bucks. Let's get our six and eight out there. On or off on the come out, it actually doesn't matter, I don't think. Uh, not that much. Uh, some people are superstitious one way or the other. You're going to roll just as many come out sevens as you roll point sevens, probably, unless you have some really good dice controllers. All right, so there's a seven. So we got a seven before a six or eight. So most likely, this next roll will go the other way. Here we go. And we got an eight. Yep, so there's one eight. We weren't on though, we weren't working. And we got a five, three, two, five. And we got a six. Okay. So there's two sixes before a seven. $25 winner. Rack all these green chips up. Let's get some whites. They're kind of a different size almost. Okay, so now we're just trying to hit sixes and eights. We're in it for a dollar. There's an eight right there, point made. Six, two, all right, $21. We're behind a little bit, so we do have to make up some ground. But that that's the idea of this. It's not, I'm not necessarily trying to show a strategy or anything here. I'm just showing the the six and eight are a very valuable tool and you should have them in every strategy. I mean, I can only think of one or two strategies that where you shouldn't incorporate the six and eight. And that's if you're just playing a dome or, and even them strategies, it's not, it's not terrible to incorporate. It's actually a really good idea, I think, to incorporate it. All right, so we lost there, but on that shooter itself, we actually won $20. So we're up 20 on that, that individual shooter. Let's go back to here. Got a 5-1. Yeah. Oh, 5-2. Five, 5-1, five, 5-2. Five, All right. So this is actually going about exactly how it's supposed to go. We're rolling the come outs as our number. And that's killing us. Uh, that's one of the, I, the arguments for being on on the come out. See, there's another one. That's three in a row where we would have won on the numbers. All right, back to back eights. So there is an argument for being on, of course. It's still preference though. We won 35. Still preference. The math says it really doesn't matter either way. So, I think people feel like they see more come out sevens because most of the time people are trying to see a come out seven, you know, or they're playing the dough and they're worried about a come out seven. But the point seven happens just as much from a purely random standpoint. All right, so there's another come out six or eight that would have been money. And there's a four. So we still need to hit here, otherwise we'll lose a dollar. And there's an eight, all right, so it's a $21 eight. And a four. And a two. And an 11. And I know some people on the come out, they feel like that they just get killed all the time. But what they're not realizing is that all the other times that 
and they made a point and they never even paid no attention to it because they went straight into their strategy they didn't realize that all of them were winners if they were working and so i mean it, it's like i said it's just preference on when or working on the come out or not working on the come out it's all in all in preference and there's the six on the come out again so we would have had a bunch of come out winners and the eight okay so this is actually running very very similar to how i think it should be running uh, from a a betting standpoint like i think that this is falling how it should fall so i don't think we're getting any weird sets of numbers all right here we go we're looking for a hit we got a six perfect four two it's a 21 dollar winner okay we're off on the come out and there's a point that's gonna be four and we got a nine six three nine and a seven okay five two see we're ro we're rolling two six or eights per seven but the problem is is one of them is the point and so that that's it's, it's hurting us it really is but with that said if we were on on it may be rolling come out sevens and hurting us that what i'm getting at is that it's honestly all preference when it comes to that there's arguments for it both ways and it's like i said I, I, it's all preference on that come out or not come out being being worked all right there's a come out seven so we had a loss there and a six so there's the one we would have won on i mean like i said we just saw it back to back and do this i mean it's all preference and they yell and a five three two five and the eight all right so we got our eight so that's actually two two of them numbers before seven at this point which means we will most likely roll a seven before another one of them. If you were just talking about uh, probability and law of averages and stuff. But we're gonna play it out because we're playing for a dollar. You know, we're, we're playing this six and eight for a dollar out of our bankroll. So we're definitely gonna play it out. And we got a seven. <laughs> Five, two. So we lost a dollar overall on that one. Not a huge deal. There will be a run where we roll five or six of them. It's just the nature of it. So that will happen. And there will be a run where you get .7 out every time. I mean, there's, there's all, all of them runs are involved. And there's the six. All right, so we hit a five, one. That's all part of playing crabs. There's no perfect way to win just every time. This, that's not a thing. And there's the seven. So the second we've, we've reduced our bets, which is good because we're not losing nothing but a dollar, we're rolling the seven. And so again, that's, it's just how the rollout is happening. It's not anything we're doing right or wrong. It's just the way it's happening. All right, I'm gonna get 100 in ones here. And so, again, like I said, we're doing fine. Everything's going as planned. And there's the six, five, one. So we need another one before seven. And we got a 12. We need a six or eight before seven. And we didn't get it. Oh, that was hurt. That was painful right there. We haven't got enough winners. We've rolled plenty of six and eights. We haven't rolled them as winners, and that's hurting us. All right. Let's see if we can get a couple winners here. And there's a 
there's a five, four, one. All right, we're looking for a winner. And a five right back. And a five right again, three fives in a row. And the nine, six out of three. And five again. Okay, five's hot. Five's rolling hot. And there's the eight. Another come out of eight. It's painful. Three, two, one. Nine. Nine again, five, four. Aces. One, one. And hard four. Hard four back. Two hard fours in a row. Hard ten. So we are all over the board dodging that six and eight. I love it when it does this. This frustrates me so bad. There's the six finally. We went a million miles to get there. Okay, so we're in for 36 for one dollar out of the bankroll. Let's see if we can hit some of these. And we got the five, three, two. We need to hit a couple of them. Be nice to go on a little run here. And there's an eight, point made eight, six, two. There's one hit, it's good. It means this shooter was worth 20 bucks. So far. And we have a three, two, one. I'm not doing anything for us, we're just playing six and eight. All right, there's a five. So we'd like to get another hit here. And we got a seven, five and a two. All right, we did get a hit in there, so that's good. So that's, this is just over and over and over, the six and eight. Now this isn't a strategy per se. This is just me showing why you should be playing this bet. All right, and, and why I think you should be playing it in this fashion with this, this methodology behind it. There's a four, two, six, another come out winner, and a yo, a four. We need to hit one of the numbers, a three. 12, uh oh, all tall's looking good, just need the box numbers. And the ugly seven. All right, so I don't think we have enough for another shot at it. But anyways, that's the idea behind it. Now, in this case, we did, we did end up losing money, but the reason is all the sixes and eights were there. They just all happened to have land on the come out. So, I mean, there that's the argument for being on, on the come out, whatever. It doesn't really make a difference. All I was showing mostly is that you can take that six and eight and you can play it bigger and then reduce one time and get all your bets for free or for cheap, at least very cheap, all right? And so that's, that's why I think the six and eight is so valuable when you're playing. It's one of the things that I do constantly. I always have a six and eight playing and uh, it's made me a lot of money playing that way. And uh, almost every strategy you'll see out there is directly uh, after that six and eight. And even like road gambler and stuff, you saw when he was playing his put bets, if you guys know what I'm talking about here, when he was playing them $5,000, $3,000 put bets, he was putting them on the six and eight. He wasn't putting them anywhere else. He wasn't playing through the come and the pass line and all that. He was playing the six and eight. The reason being because it's the closest to the seven. So you're getting as close to even probability as you can, all right, per number. So that's why, and that's why you should be doing it. 
you should, in my opinion, be playing it with a certain uh, a regression of types. That way you can play it for free. And uh, all, as much as you can play for free at the craps table, the better. You're always going to do better if you don't have bankroll at risk. You're always going to come out better with that. Anyways, guys, this is Jacob from Wait to Me This, and you guys have a good day.